in getting the care he needs. She adds a state police officer rushed to protect Rushdie and a moderator who was also hurt in the attack. Now he is best known for his book, The Satanic Verses, which had the Ayatollah of Iran called for his murder back in 1989. While there haven't been any proclamations from Iran about Rushdie in years, there is still a $3 million bounty for anyone who kills the author. We're getting new details tonight on the FBI's raid on former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort. The filing indicates that the Justice Department is investigating potential violations of at least three separate criminal statutes, including a statute under the Espionage Act. The unsealed documents show the FBI found 11 sets of classified materials, one of them marked as top secret, and it's a security clearance only a few in the federal government have. Now Trump no longer has a security clearance. The Washington Post also reporting that some of the material in Trump's possession included documents related to nuclear weapons. There are laws against the improper handling of, of this material. Now, Republicans continue to threaten the DOJ and the FBI with their own investigations of the agency if they take back control of Congress. They claim it's about oversight and transparency. All right, it is Friday, so all eyes are on the weekend. It's beautiful, isn't it? All right, can we keep this up, Cesar Cornejo? Well, Kelly, Jamie, that's what we can expect to see uh, this weekend. It's going to be fantastic, and that weather's going to continue. But let's take a look outside the Inner Harbor for our afternoon. Look at the beautiful skies out there, mostly sunny, and we're seeing that temperatures are very comfortable, hanging around the 80s as we look across the state. 84 in the Inner Harbor. We're seeing 82 in a few pockets, and then once you get to Westminster, Thermal, it's a little bit warmer in the upper 80s, but the good thing is the humidity is basically non-existent here. And that's really one thing that we'll be able to enjoy as we look to eat dinner outside. Having dinner on the patio is a must. Look at those temperatures. Finally getting into the 70s as we head into the evening hours. Plenty of clear skies as well. Few clouds here and there, but otherwise humidity is going to stay down. So you're not going to be feeling like you're sitting in your own soup. So the fantastic thing is that continues for us into the overnight hours with a low of 61. It's been a while since we've seen temperatures really hang around like that. And as we take a look here for your out the door forecast, well, it's going to be pretty fantastic as we have plenty of sunshine and temperatures hanging around in the 80s for us, which means it's going to be a great one to head out to the beach. But of course, with a couple weeks left for summer vacation, many of you will be spending that time in or around the Chesapeake Bay. But while its currents are strong, the bay is a delicate place where pollutants disrupt and degrade its health. Tonight, we're looking at what's harming the bay and how the partnership to protect how the partnership that protects it is doing. The Chesapeake Bay Agreement was signed in 1983, so next year that will mark 40 years that we've been trying to monitor and hopefully restore the bay as well. Six states and the District of Columbia agree, along with federal and local governments, that working together is the way to improve the water quality of runoff entering the bay by monitoring pollutants. So there's three main um, pollutants that we try to monitor, and that is nitrogen, it's phosphorus and it's also sediment. Can you see the bottom? Buoy data, along with computer modeling, are used to track levels of pollutants and where they fall compared to the agreement goals. These pollutants are both man-made and naturally occurring, but when there is an excess amount, it leads to issues. Sediment clouds the water, stopping light from reaching the bay floor where seagrasses grow. Nitrogen and phosphorus are nutrients for plants and while some is good, one type of plant thrives too well in the excess. Think about phosphorus, think about nitrogen. Over time, that produces harmful algal blooms, and over time, that can literally stop an area from growing and thriving, and we call that a dead zone. These dead zones are devoid of life due to the lack of oxygen once the harmful algal bloom dies off. So things like crabs, fish, oysters, and even seagrasses cannot survive in these areas. Climate change is also affecting the bay. When we have severe weather events, the severe weather is more impactful. So that means it affects the aquatic life for a longer period of time, as well as the grasses as well. And we can't forget about how the warmer water temperatures are affecting aquatic life. What we're starting to see is warmer ocean temperatures and also warmer temperatures in the Chesapeake Bay. And as a result, we're seeing different migratory patterns. 
you've been around the bay, you've seen blue crabs and oysters, but recently other marine wildlife has also decided to call the Chesapeake Bay home as well. We're starting to see aquatic life that we don't normally see in this area. For example, dolphins and even sharks are now being seen in the Chesapeake Bay. Our partners at the Chesapeake Bay Foundation estimated that the bay's overall value is $1 trillion. That's T trillion. So let's put that in perspective. That's recreation, that's food, that's shipping, um, that's watermen and water women going out on the bay and making a living. So are we seeing any improvements? And we found that this partnership over 40 years has had proven results. So to answer your question, yes, there were challenges with the bay. There are still challenges with the bay, but we're definitely moving in the right direction and we have proven results. Those results are in large part thanks to the government agencies, farmers, water treatment plants, and even individuals like you and me, giving us a chance to enjoy a healthy bay for many more years to come. As Dr. Boyd had mentioned, there are still several issues facing the bay and a lot more states can do to reduce pollution. In the most recent report, the program says only Washington, D.C. and West Virginia met all of their 2021 goals for pollution reductions. Maryland, New York, Pennsylvania and Virginia met some of their goals, while Delaware did not meet any. He looked pretty good out there in those shades, did. didn't he? Nice job there. Way to go. Good job.